Hi, it's Paul again from Evan Sky Studios, and today I'm going to be doing video number seven uh, in the series showing how Sable can be used to create an RPG audio game. Now, what I want to do in today's video is basically take everything that we've made in the last six videos and just make it feel a little bit more like a game. So what we'll do is we'll add an, a start and an end to the game. We'll also add a quest, we'll add a boss battle, we'll add a couple more event triggers and a few other little bits and bobs. But there's quite a lot we want to get through today. So because of that, I've already loaded up Sable and we're already in the inn. So the first thing I want to do is you may remember when in one of the earlier videos we added a trigger event to the exit to the inn so when the player left in play game mode it fired a cutscene which was just the Evan Sky Studios logo um, because we're making this feel more like a game I want to add a more game feeling cutscene so let's amend the cutscene that plays when we leave the inn exit to the inn let's add an uh, amended trigger event here please select if you wish for a cutscene or music change change map music cutscene Please select a cutscene you would like to play the demo intro. Dragon flying okay, overhead. So we want the dragon flying overhead cutscene to fire when the player leaves the inn. So let's select that. Select event trigger. Uh, we don't want any None. extra event triggers. Event trigger added. And now, when in playable game mode, uh, when the player leaves the, the inn, they'll basically get that cutscene play. So the innkeeper. The next thing I want to do is in the last map or the last video, sorry, we created a map to the caves. And there was a door which led from that map to this map, but the door was locked. So I want to introduce a mechanic which will allow the player to get the key so they can you go through that cave door. And what I'm going to do is make it so the innkeeper will give the player that key. So the first thing I want to do is use the object editor to edit the innkeeper. Please select which object attribute you want to amend. Name. Description. Uh, so Sound set. You can amend any uh, object already placed on Sable. Uh, they'll all have their own individual options. Speech. I want to amend the speech for this NPC. Please so select which line of speech you wish to amend. Hi. I thought I asked you. Thank you. This is the line I want to amend. So let's amend this Please one. Please enter the new speech edit. End. Let's just put onto Com the end of here. Please select which line of speech. Speech. Okay, so we've now changed what he'll say once the task's complete. Now let's attach a trigger event to him so he'll actually give us the key once the task's complete. Select when you would like the trigger to fire. The first time you interact with the innkeeper. After setting the task. Once the player has returned and completed the task. That's when we want him to give us the key. Please select if you wish for a cutscene or no. music change. None. Select event trigger. Okay, so we want him to give us a key item. Key item. Please select. Select which item. He'll Chain give us. mail. Key to cave door. There it is. Event trigger added. So now, once we've completed the task for the innkeeper, he will basically give us that key. Uh, the next thing I want to show is when you're in a building, you can actually uh, add an ambient and a music layer, or amend the ambient or music layer. So let's amend the ambience within the inn. Ambiences. So please select um, amb in underscore ambience underscore v1. Let's use the in ambience here. And also we can change the music, so let's do that. Music. Please select Rose of the Veil, okay. Vinyl V6. So I'm going to select the uh, Rose of the Veil song, which is actually an in song from our upcoming game Crimson Eclipse. Um, what we've actually tried to do with the vocals of in music is we've actually tried to use them to further world building. For example, this particular song kind of hints at the uh, tough unforgivingness of the Veil lands. And, and again, like I say, we basically just try to use vocals to further illustrate world lore. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that it's actually a sound engineer that wrote, composed, produced, and even sung this song. Um, he's actually also done all the music you've heard in all the previous videos as well. But anyway, let's select that. And you can now hear the background music to that song beginning to play. So the next thing I want to do yes. is I want to amend what items are in the chest. So Len, again, let's go to our object editor. Please select which object attribute. Add additional yeah. items to the add object. Add additional items. Please select item. Longbow of dexterity. And let's add the longbow that we created in one of the earlier videos. Please select items. Longbow fact, of dexterity. Let's add two longbows. Longbow of dexterity. Add additional items to the object. Okay, so that's the uh, everything commended in there. Let's now. The innkeeper. Exit to the inn. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to. Um, add a cutscene which will fire the first time the player ever starts a game and play game mode. So let's add a cutscene or an intro. Please select a cutscene you would like to play. Sable demo this intro. This one I made specifically for the demo or our sound engineer did, so let me select that. 
Please enter text you would like spoken as an intro the first time the map is loaded. This game trail added. type and text. And there we go, that's added that intro. The next thing I want to do is I want to uh, set a starting map and location for when the player uh, loads the game up in play game mode. So let me do that. Please select project options. Please set starting map. Let's set the starting map. Please select map one. Map one set as starting map. Visit this map to place the character's starting point on the map. Okay, so let's project do that. options. Set set let's player set starting location. Where the player will start. On the map. Find the player's starting position on the map. Okay, so let's say they start here, and we're we'll player starting position set. Uh, so this is where the player will start when they first load the game and play game mode. Now, the next thing I want to do is you may remember in the earlier videos we created some armor, some uh, chainmail, and also there are some walls ro uh, uh, roaming around this map which we might be able to uh, battle and encounter. What I want to do is change the chainmail armor to wolf pelts, so that way we can set it so the wolf, uh, once defeated, drops wolf pelts, which can be used as sort of a makeshift cloak or something. So let's do that. Let's bring up the edit menu. Please select. Armor. Let's find armor. Select armor, chain mail. There it is. Please select. Edit chain mail. Okay, so let's edit the chain mail. So let's. Please select name. Uh, now you can. Uh, let's change its name. Armor to create Selected chain mail. Blank. O L F. Wolf. P E L T. L N. Edit. Type and text. Okay, and then. Sound set. Let's also change the sound that's played when it's equipped. Please select sound set. Fur. Okay, so it now play the fur equipped. Sound, sound set. set. Armor slot. And let's change the armor slot to about body so it can be used, like I said, as a sort of makeshift. Please cloak. select about body. Armor slot. Again, I could add a description to say it's a wolf pelt that could be used as a sort of makeshift uh, cloak, but I won't worry about that too much at the stage. Uh, now let's make it so the wolf can drop those wolf pelts. Please select. Um, enemies. enemies. Please select. Wolf. Please select. Overview. Stats. Experience. Abilities. Damage type. Resiliences, vulnerabilities, edit, droppable Here, items. Here's, here's all the options for the wolf, but it's droppable that I wanted, so let's select that. Please select, view now, existing. We could view any items the wolf already drops, but we haven't set anything, so that would be empty. Add new. So let's add some new items the wolf can Please drop. select the item the enemy can drop. Key to cave door, wolf pelt. Uh, there's the wolf pelt. Enter the percentage chance of the enemy dropping this item, please seven, uh, five. So here we can enter the percentage chance of it dropping this. So let's say 75%. So when the wolf's defeated, it's got a 75% chance of dropping a wolf pelt that a player can pick up. Would you like the enemy to drop enemy. another item? No. Nope. No. Droppable items. Okay, so let's come out of that. So let's head down to the uh, Bridge. cave door next. Path to cave. And uh, let's say we want to add some, I don't know, some crow sounds. Panning sounds. Um, Please select common raven crows. Uh, near the cave entrance. Let's place those here. There we go. Just to sort of uh, add a little bit more atmosphere here. Now, this has actually taken a little bit longer than I expected it to do. So what I'm going to probably do is actually split the, this particular video into two parts. Um, so I'm going to end the video here. But we will do a second part continuing to... Um, continuing to uh, show how we're turning this our, our demo more into a game and in the next video we'll add the uh, boss battle we'll add uh, a quest we'll add an end and a few other bits but that way it will keep the video to a, a decent sort of time rather than making it really long and um, as ever I hope you've enjoyed the video um, I will um, obviously like I say be working on part two which we'll post uh, as soon as uh, sooner than, than we usually would if you want to keep up to date on social media and everything else, uh, do, uh, do feel free to check out social media if you want to keep up to date on uh, news and updates and you can always subscribe to the channel. I hope you've enjoyed this video and do keep a lookout for part two. Thank you very much.